All right, welcome to another episode of Closers or Losers. Jeremy Miner, founder of Seven Level. Uh, I am. I have a set in today. Uh, Matt Ryder, our fearless leader, is still sleeping, and I'm over in Warsaw, Poland, and it is late here. It's uh, well, a few o'clock. Eight o'clock's not too bad. But I wanted to to bring on uh, one of our corporate officers. This is Sam Griner. You guys might not know him. Sam is our vice president of customer fulfillment. So he is the guy that is the bridge between, I would say, our our account managers, like our, our salespeople, and actually our fulfillment department, which would be me and all of our sales trainers that we have to make sure that when our, our customers, you know, purchase something, whether they are a company and we're training, you know, 500 of their salespeople or they're an individual salesperson, making sure that they get trained and actually get the results that they paid for the training. Sam, how did you even get into this role, man? I, you know, I don't do any of the hiring anymore. I heard you're awesome, but uh, how, how did you get into this role? Because you used to no, be a not, client like two and a half years ago. Yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm not that cool. You're not uh, that cool. Okay. But one. Of, so one of the this this may come as a surprise to you. It may not. But one of the one of the cool things about NAPQ is when you understand how to communicate more effectively, you start yeah. to be able to kind of ask for what you want. Okay. The, the challenge for that is when somebody like Matt or you asks. Do you want to do this? It's very hard to say no. But uh, one of the one of the things that I realized, um, let's say, like when I was a client, was that yeah. I showed up and I did what I needed to do and I got what I wanted. But there were people yeah. that I didn't feel kind of did the same thing. So when yeah. Marco had asked me, you know, I guess it was like a year ago, yeah, uh, whether I wanted to come on in more of like an accountability position, it wasn't. Yeah. It was something that I looked at as, so yeah, this isn't going to be something that. I need, or that let's say you would have needed in a, yeah. you know, if you were in a coaching program, something like that. But yeah, I want to make sure that our clients that are not comfortable speaking up mm -hmm. or don't really want to hop on camera or are busy, yeah, yeah. Other things are still able to get what they're, you know, to your point, get what they were, yeah, get what they're coming to us to, to help them with. Well, and we, uh, we had to, we had to have you, we had to have somebody fulfill that role as the company kept scaling and getting bigger and bigger. And we're talking about onboarding, you know, sometimes thousands of, of people in a month, yeah. you have to have a fulfillment team. And we've seen sales training companies, you know, grow. And because their fulfillment was not really there, they were kind of broken in there. They weren't getting clients results. Eventually they just faded away because in our mind, seventh level, it's all about client results. You get clients, the results they paid for, just by default, you're going to have way more clients. If you can't yeah. get them results, then you have no business doing what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And I think one of the, one of the, one of the coolest things I would say about kind of going on the other side of the table, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Cause you know, uh, I've been in sales, right? That's how I, that's how I came to. You did. You were a client here like two and a half years ago. I remember we started the advanced inner circle program at that point. We had a different version the first year before that. Yeah. And I, I think you were probably one of the first hundred members in advanced inner circle, if I remember. Yeah. So, I mean, it was pretty, it was pretty early days. Like, and, and we've, we've expanded the, the number of calls, like the, the types of calls. So I feel like we have seven training calls a day now or something. It's crazy. <laughs> between, <laughs> all, uh, between all parts all, of yeah, the world, between all the programs that are circle yeah. 3.0 and. Uh, you know, two point oh with coaching. Uh, we, yeah. I would say we have closer to closer to fifteen a day. Fifty. That is holy. Oh, like, I didn't even. You know, I didn't. That's something that I did not even know. That's crazy. Yeah. So we have a we have a we have the inner circle, right? Which is obviously our flagship, which is you know, getting yeah. specific advice and feedback from you on scripting, industry specific reality, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. we can help people build that out. And then we have mm -hmm. the objection call with Marco. If you ask me anything with Matt, where he goes over sales advice, business advice, life advice, if that's what you can help with. But sure. For 3.0, yeah. we have and one of the things we realized, you know, as I guess somebody like myself came in and was acting as that bridge between sales and fulfillment was yeah. we have a lot of clients that aren't showing up on calls because the time zone's not favorable to that. Sure. So yeah. rather than just say, hey, that's tough luck, you have to wake up at two thirty in the morning to hop on a training call to see my my mug. Yeah, if I'm right on one of the calls, 
we have the ability, we have the means, we have the the team in yeah. place to be able to offer you know, yeah. split time zones. So we have yeah, you know, 3.0, we have a US favorable time zone, and then we have the global version, which is more we, we have you know, US Aussie free. We have yeah, we have US, we have Aussie, New Zealand, and we also have Europe now as well. So we pretty much between those three different time zones, we're covering Asia, we're covering pretty much everywhere. And I, I really did not know we had 15 different training calls every day, but it's because of all those different time zones. Yep. Yep. Different time zones, different content. Yeah. You know, we, and, and one of the, one of the other things as well is if we see somebody that is coming in, they're getting results, they ask good questions because they understand how to communicate, but more importantly, they, they kind of want to take that extra step and they want to be able to help, yeah. you know, lend their expertise to other other places is yeah you know we bring clients on as subject matter experts or coaches and sure. against, against we do yeah depending on depending on their results involved. right if we want yeah. industry specific trainers we'll subcontract with them you know solar life insurance i mean so many different industries now where you know let's say we have a client we help them go from you know five six grand a month and now they're making fifty thousand a month or eighty thousand yeah. a month like joseph roberry hundred and fifty thousand a month is solar subcontract them in come in and do a training call every week and show those new clients who are in that industry, like how to tie in any PQ to their specific industry. That's been a big game changer. I mean, we had thousands of testimonies before that, but since that's happened as well, that's even improved the experience. I think the biggest thing, you know, is if you guys are listening to us right now, if you're a sales manager, sales leader, you know, if you're somebody in that's kind of in Sam's shoes in your company, you're over fulfillment with whatever you do, um, it's all about you, the biggest thing is, is in any industry, you're going to have some companies that just the, the most important thing for them is just, you know, making as many sales as they can. And the customer is like a secondary thing. But the problem is, is I've never seen a business that just went out and crushed sales and treated the customer as kind of a secondary thing that ever really lasted that long. You know, they might crush it for three, four, five years. Heck, they might even go 10 years. But that company is not a legacy company. They're not here 20 years from now, 30 years, 50 years. They're, they're just not going to last. So at seventh level, the most important thing for us is to have the brand continue long past when I'm here, Matt's here, Marco's here, you here, and to lay that foundation where the company's still here 50 years from now, 75 years, 100 years. So there's, there's months where we make so many sales that we like have to put the foot on the brake a little bit and turn down our lead volume, our marketing volume, because we don't want to get too many clients. Yeah. And it's because if we get too many clients without more uh, sales trainers to be able to train them, then they don't get fulfillment. And then that makes obviously seventh level look bad. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's always a bad day when Marco has to ask me, Hey, do I need to turn? Do I need to turn down the ads? <laughs> turn down ad spend here. <laughs> well, maybe we just maybe we just don't bring anybody into inner circle for another month. Yeah, and sometimes we have to do that with our advanced programs, like advanced inner circle. We keep that smaller. We only let a certain amount of people in there per month. I think it might be twenty five or thirty or whatever per month in that type of advanced program because we want to keep those groups smaller. And then some months we just we have so many people join it that we just we have to cut it off for one or two months, and then there's a wait list to get in. Yeah. Which is not a bad problem to have. Now, talk about talk about fulfillment, though. Like you've been you've been in the position for a year now. What, like in your mind, what are some things that you see that you put in in place, and kind of the results you you've gotten from putting those systems and stuff in place to make sure that every client, even ones who are like so busy with their work that never get on training calls, are actually still going through at least the the recorded versions and getting results. So one of the, one of the, I would say one of the biggest game changers was just having somebody there that is aware that those people aren't showing up. Yeah. Right? Because one of the, I think an interesting phenomenon is when somebody realizes that, uh, there are people watching, right? Yeah. Because one of, one of the, one of the things that we're taught as kids is, you know, like, uh, you know, having integrity is like doing the right thing, even when nobody's watching. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's something to be said when you get an email from Marie or me or Alberto that says, Hey, you know, we noticed you haven't logged into the portal in over a week because 
yeah. is everything okay? Or are you just out there going on so much money that you don't have time to, to hop on the, you know, hop on and learn more to get better, which is yeah. an interesting way to say, mm-hmm. you're still not at that point yet. You should still be logging into the portal yeah. and going through. So like I said, part of it is, you know, we're aware now of, of when people aren't logging in, if they're not showing up on calls yeah. and then having a, a feedback system in place to where if a coach notices that somebody's, you know, the advantage of having so many different calls on specific mm-hmm. topics is if somebody has questions about a, a specific facet of their offer or their business mm-hmm. or where they're, what they're looking to do kind of next, yeah. we can point them in that direction yeah. you know, and in, in building out the coaching department. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have the ability to maintain notes of that, maintain record of that on the back end. Yeah. So then we can, we have a more coherent process for making sure the clients are showing up where they need to show up, going through the things that they need to go through and working on the things that they were asked to work on in between calls, you know, to make sure that it's not just, Hey, you should do this. And that's all. Yeah, that, hey, here's, here's, the, here's the days we have the training calls. Here's your email. I'll see you later. Hope you make it. And I see a lot of companies do that, right? Yeah. So having the accountability coaches, I think has been even better to make sure that everybody is showing up or at least if they're not showing up because they're just so busy with work or, or whatever, at least they know that we're, we're taking care of them, that we know they yeah. exist. They're not just another number. Like if we know you're there, you know, you, you came in, you know, we don't have salespeople that come to us to get worse. They come to us because they want to make a lot more money. They want to sell more of their products and services companies as well. So there was a reason why they came in and we want to make sure they stick accountable to that for themselves, their families, supporting the companies they work for, those type of things. Really, really important. Uh, Something else, maybe something else. uh, Let's go over the fulfillment that you've seen maybe in other companies be weekend that you have kind of, you know, put some changes in here to make sure we didn't fall into that trap. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, the biggest one, you, I mean, the biggest one you already touched on is uh, exponential growth without mm-hmm. having the systems in place to support that is a surefire yeah. way to have your, your tower of business topple. Sure. But there's some, obviously there's some, there's some companies that have been more prevalent with that recently um, that mm-hmm. have gone through some changes and restructuring, but mm-hmm. um, just the ability, the, the ability to, I would say one of the, one of the. One of the things that's been uh, readily apparent in working with you and Matt and Marco at, at seventh mm-hmm. level is the, I guess, like the ability that I have to put full to to go full stop on, hey, we're not doing this because it's not yeah. in the client's best interest. I, I would say that uh, in sales training organizations, or I would mm-hmm. say sales centric companies in general, mm-hmm. uh, there isn't much weight attached to the customer experience or the yeah. fulfillment department because they're just kind of there to do a thing. Yeah. Right? That's kind of the, the expectation is like, we sell, you fulfill, like shut up and stay in the corner. Yeah. Um, and that's not, that's not really the case here. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, if yeah. that kind of that, uh, that feedback loop of, Hey, we're not doing this like client, like we need to slow down. So the clients are so we get the results. You're yeah. going to have to do something else. You're going to have to sell more people into the portal and we can upsell them later. Yeah, because there's there's certain times where we, we we might find a client, you know, gets right into advanced inner circle. And after they've been on some some training calls, we find that the client is not it is not ready enough to be in that program. Like we yeah. they're gonna go, they're gonna go down into one of our beginning programs and then later they can upgrade. But yeah. we'll, our trainers will say like, yeah, that, that guy, he's great. He's just not ready for this type of advanced training. It's a little bit over his head. So we need to put him in, in NPQ 3.0, have him start in there for three, four months. And then if yeah. he wants, he can get back in inner circle. Cause it's all about the client results, right? Yeah. Can't get results. Then, you, you know, what are you, what are you in business yeah. for? Yeah. And I'd rather, I'd rather put them in the program that they need to be in, even yeah. if it's at. You know, and, and that's a lot of times I'm in, obviously I'm on the opposite side of the table with the sales rep at that point Yeah, from a commission perspective, because that's never, that's yeah. never a conversation a rep wants to hear is, Hey man, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm dropping this program down, which means we're going to have to, we're going to have to take some of that back. But all of the sales reps in the same conversation are on the same page as the rest of us that yeah. we're here for clients. We're here to change the way that people view sales 
mm-hmm. you know, sales people and yeah. sales as a whole. You know, so we're we're all on the same page. It's yeah. a hell of an awkward conversation to have. <laughs> it is with sales people for sure. <laughs> yeah, I know that for sure. Um what have you um what have you seen from other companies though? I mean, other other companies, lack of fulfillment, what have you seen? Well, so lack of fulfillment, it there I would say with other companies, there's a lot of there's a lot of empty promises and, and dreams mm-hmm. that are sold. Okay. Right. It's very much so let's say it's sold as a it's sold as a uh a way out of your nine to five, right? Which sales can be for sure. Like, sure. And, and that makes sense, but we're not yeah. promising, we're not promising jobs. We're not selling somebody on the expectation of something unrealistic. Yeah. And say, we're going to teach you a skill that allows you to communicate more effectively, make more sales and ultimately make whatever money you want to make. Yeah. So you want to invest in yourself to increase your level of professionalism, increase your level of skill. Right. Sure. So like we're fulfilling on the things that we're promising. Mm. not just stacking bodies in the program <laughs> like it's a maid locker because that's the way that it works in a lot of places. Sure. So, but the, I, I would say the, the other part of it is we're, we're consistently improving, right? One of the mm. conversations that yeah. you and I specifically have um, are how do we improve this product? How do we improve yeah. this part, this piece of the, of the yeah. client's education experience? Yeah. You know, and one of the things that we did uh, that went live at the beginning of June was the update to the portal. Sure. Right. There yeah, are that's of. the, that's the anti-PQ 2.0 portal that I originally recorded. I want to say about three years ago. Yeah. And we noticed there were certain aspects of NEPQ that clients, we felt like didn't understand. Like we would get a lot of questions around certain things. And what that does is it, is it tells Sam and it, and it tells me, and it, it tells our sales trainers that there's something in the portal that was not explained well enough. So rather than just hoping and praying people figure it out, yeah. we go in and, and we change that. We continually update the content, you know, every year we're updating it. But so what I did is, you know, that's a, any 3.0 is like a 43 hour course now or something like that. But I went in and completely changed the first 16, I want to say the first 15 to 16 hours of that, which was like the EQ 2.0 version. I think the 2.0 version was originally like 10 or 11 hours, but I'm like, there's certain things that they're not picking up. And I wanted to go in and, and change that. So we changed that around probably about 30, 35%. And then we put in like a whole nother six hours of content in that portal. And that's something that we'll do pretty much on an annual, annual basis. Yeah. And, and Jeremy, this is to your credit, I would say as much as anything else, there You've made a ton of money in sales, and I, I don't think anybody I don't think anybody can argue with that. Uh, sure. But one of the one of the coolest things for me is that the NAPQ that I learned two and a half years ago mm-hmm. is not the same evolution of NAPQ that it is today. Sure, like, because your appetite for learning has uh, increased, if anything, compared to what sure. it was when you were, you know, still in sales full time as just a sure. just a sales rep. Yeah. Um, but the 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 constant desire for improvement, the constant desire for refinement, and to yeah, I guess still increase your understanding of sales and persuasion, yeah, as far into your career with as much money as you made is pretty cool. Because any PQ will always evolve. It will never it will never stay the same because prospects evolve, things change, right? Yeah. Um, there's there's things that work extremely well now that in five years from now won't work as well. But we will always evolve. One thing I saw when when I first started Seven Bubble was basically me and my former assistant for my job, Beth, who's still with the company, my first employee still here. I love that. Is a, a lot of these sales training companies that have run around, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. Like if you go back and look at their materials from the 70s and 80s, it's exactly the same as it is now. Yeah. There's like literally no difference. And I'm like, don't they understand that like human behavior, like it did actually change? There's some core things that never change. But yeah. there, there, you know, social media, like there's things that have caused the prospect to be far more skeptical and cautious where we have to evolve. And there's certain questions that might've worked a decade ago that don't work as well now because they're so overused yeah. and they have to be tweaked. They have to be relanguaged. And I always, I always found it a little bit disappointing uh, when I, cause I went through in my, my 17 year sales career, I, 
counter up, I went through like 163 different sales training courses. And then, yeah. you know, as far as books and audios, it was like 1300 yeah, something. The, the insert hundred. last name here system is the same as it was. Yeah, but it's, it's all this. Yeah, it's like the same stuff over and over. And I'm just like, it just doesn't work. And I, and I knew being in the trenches, I knew because I was in the trenches at that time that it didn't work. But yeah, sales trainers were still spouting it worked. And I'm like, I'm in the trenches. I'm one of the top 50 sales people in the world in any industry, not me yeah. saying it. Um, like, I know that doesn't work. Like, I know what works and what doesn't work. Like, that doesn't work, but it's still in your book. It's still in your- rely on the system, it, man. It's still in your sales training program because a lot of those guys haven't sold anything for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. So we will always evolve. We will always improve. Like, sometimes we'll have like an inner circle training call, you know, scripting session. There'll be like 40 or 50 members on there. And we'll go through a sales structure that they copy and pasted from, you know, the same industry because we have all those industry specific scripts back there from everywhere. Yeah. And they'll make a little tweak on it. And I'll I'll look at it. I'm like, that's a really good tweak. And I was like, you know, we're going to start making that tweak on these other industries as well, because that will help them. And we'll, you know, that first problem we're in this question works really well for that industry, but we're going to have to tweak it for this industry. And so it'll always evolve. Like, you know, two years from now, there'll be there'll be things that we will tweak to make it, it was, even even better it was it was close to this time last year uh, when i had stepped into uh-huh. stepped into the the coaching role and i guess more into a management role yeah i stopped one of the training calls and i was like what are you doing right like where did that come from and like what are you taught it's like that wasn't what you taught me a year ago you're like oh yeah, yeah. this works way better just do this I'm like oh, yeah like, we evolve you have to yeah. evolve as a company as a training company if you're so set in your ways and you can't like I I'm you know even though I was did so well and in, in, as a salesman myself I never believed that I knew everything about sales and persuasion. There's always something yeah. to learn, uh, and I I find that interesting that you know guys and gals that might make you know low six figures think they know everything about selling. I was making more than that in a month, and I was like I don't know anything about selling. Like I got to keep yeah. learning. Like I'm you know I'm just scratching the surface here. So. I think as a, you know, if you're listening to yours as a salesperson or a sales manager, if you're, you know, if you, if you really start to think like, Hey man, selling is a skills game. It's not really a numbers game. It's a skills game. And the more skills I acquire, the more advanced sales ability, the more advanced tonality, more advanced body language, the more advanced objection prevention, the more advanced questions I learn, I'm just going to sell more. So it's like it, it's to me, it's like a game that you're always learning something. You know what I mean? Like if you're, if you're a baseball player, you know, you don't just stop getting better with your technique. It, it's like Steph Curry, right? You yeah. know, Steph Curry, three point champion, you know, he's always working on his technique every day. And it's like, he, even though he's getting older, it's like his technique gets better. His body might not be as well put together because he's in his mid thirties or whatever, but his technique has gotten better. And that's why he's so great. If Steph yeah. Curry thought basketball was a numbers game, he would have never made his varsity basketball team. And I, I yeah, it's just numbers game. Just shoot it, <laughs> shoot as many threes as you want. You'll eventually hit one. You know, you right. might shoot 10% from the three point line. No, Steph always thought, you know, basketball is a skills game. So yeah. you work on your technique to make more shots as a salesperson. You have to start thinking that sales is a skills game and you focus on every single conversation, the words you're using, how you're using your tone, what questions you're asking, how you're using your body language that they see you. And all of a sudden, instead of closing, you know, t- I'm just throwing out a number, instead of closing to 10 or 15%, now you're up to 30 and then 35 and then maybe 50, depends on the yeah. the industry or even higher. So if you really treat selling as a skills game, you, you just, you know, you just get better every day. Yeah. And I think one thing to maybe leave people with, uh, whether you're whether you're getting training from us, whether you're getting training from somebody else, mm-hmm. like one of my favorite phrases of Jeremy's is, "Is training something you did, or is, is training something that you do?" Yeah, right. I got that. I got that from my friend Brad Lee. I got, oh, requoting your credit where credits. Yeah, we got to get. Yeah, we got we got to recode Brad. I love but, that. Yeah, it's a great it's a great quote, and. Yeah. I think that we should all like in, in, in training as we're, as we're doing training, as we're learning and growing, um, one of the, one of the most interesting things as the guy that's in charge of fulfillment delivery to see is when people start to get it. Yeah. Right. When people start to understand the why and the how behind the what, I mean, we talk a lot about how 
you yeah. need to you need to know your script. You need to understand what you're saying. You need to have it. You need to have it down pat, right? Your yeah. gestures, your tonality, yeah, yeah, the things that you're doing. But when you understand what all of that does and why all of it works and how all of it's used, when people throw you curveballs, you understand yeah. how to get back to where you need to go because you're flexible. Exactly. Yeah, when you when you understand the psychology of buying NABQ, you're not just going from question to question on a script. You're flexible, and you know where to adjust on the fly. Because really, it, it's very rare that a sales call just goes perfectly scripted out. There's always things that unless you're Jeremy. It, it, well, you know, you know, here and there we get we get better with age, but it's uh, it, it's very rare that it's going to just follow the script. It's all about being flexible. And whatever the prospect says or asks, you know where to take it to get him back on track. Exactly. Sam, thanks for having you on here. We usually, you know, usually it's me and Matt, and then we interview like a new client from a different industry every week. But I wanted to, Sorry to throw it up, change it up. Matt. You, you know, Matt's cool, but he's still sleeping right now since I'm over in Europe this next week. So thanks for uh, holding down the office. I know you're not even working at the office today. I can see that, but there you go. Well, Thanks you're for here. You're not here. Man. Well, I know. I see. I, I leave. Everybody leaves the office there in Scottsdale. It's probably a ghost town, and everybody's working from home. <laughs> All right. Sam, thanks for being on. And everybody, thanks for uh, thanks for uh, watching and listening to us tonight uh, today. Uh, make sure you join our free Facebook group. So we'll always let you do that. Make sure you go to salesrevolution.pro. Uh, you want to start learning more skills. We'll give you a little nibbles in there, a little hors d'oeuvres. Just go to salesrevolution.pro. We go live in there two to three times a week, different Q&As, different trainings. We don't charge you for any of that. You want more advanced training like our clients? You want to start, you know, making two, three, maybe four times what you are now. Even if you're already doing well, then you can just message us in the the Facebook group, and either myself or one of my stunt doubles uh, will message you back some uh, <laughs> some options that you have if you want to sell more. So, Sam, thanks for being on. Hold down the fort. I'll be back. I'll yeah. be back in still here in about a week. All right. See you soon, man. Thanks, everybody. Hey guys, if you enjoy these, here's another you can watch right over here, right over here. Join our free sales revolution group. Click the link below, join us, and we're gonna help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.